Cool. All right, so this is going to be my talk about AI safety and understanding. <clears throat> um, just to give you an incentive to stay awake, Alexia will present the best paper awards just after this talk. So if you fall asleep, you might miss your best paper award. So don't do that. Um, so I'm Tom Everett. I'm from ANU in Marcus Harris Group. Uh, and I'm mainly interested in AI safety, but prompted by the topic of this workshop, I thought uh, to consider a question, where can understanding be useful for safety? And safety is really this question of how can we control <laughs> something that is smarter than ourselves? I think this is a really interesting philosophical question, but will also be practically relevant soon, thanks to you guys. <coughs> And there are some key problems to, um, to solve if we want to control something that's smarter than ourselves. Uh, the first one is how do we give the system the right goals? Almost all systems have some kind of parameter which codes the goals. If it's a reinforcement learning system, it's the reward signal, uh, for example. And if we can just get the goal of this AI to align with our human goals, then whatever the human, <coughs> human wants, the system will also want. So there will be no conflict and uh, no safety concerns. Presumably, we won't get this perfect. So there will be situations where uh, the AI is, supposed to, is about to do something that we really don't want it to do. In these cases, we want to be able to correct the system. And this is called corrigibility. For example, switch it off or change the source code in some way. Uh, finally, uh, provided we get these two first properties correct, um, we also want the system to preserve these properties. So we don't want some hacker to suddenly change the goals of the system, or some accident or bad software patch to, to ruin a good value system. So I thought I would just consider where understanding might help for these three properties. The thir first thing you might think about is to teach the AI some uh, relevant high-level concepts, such as what is a human, what is happiness, what, are, what is morality. And all these concepts, of course, require some understanding. So this would be a natural application of understanding to safety. And if you have this concept, you can define the goal, say, maximize hu human happiness subject to these moral constraints. Um, but even if you disregard the question if there can be any fun without breaking some moral constraints, there are some deeper issues. This is called the evil genie effect. Basically, the most literal interpretation of your wishes are typically bad for you. The first guy to experience this might have been King Midas, who wished that everything he touched would turn to gold. This seemed like a great idea until the wish was fulfilled and all his food and all his friends turned to gold. Uh, a more AI relevant example is the cure cancer example. We tell the AI to please cure cancer for us and it brilliantly solves this by killing all humans, no more cancer. So generally, this is interpreted as um, <clears throat> it's hard to actually specify what you mean. Uh, almost regardless of what you say, there will be some common sense constraints that you forgot to mention, and this will mean that satisfying the goal perfectly will be very bad for you. So therefore, explicit goal specification, although it seems like a good idea at first, uh, with this nice high-level concept, might actually be a rather bad idea. Value learning is often considered a better idea. Uh, <clears throat> and this is when we teach the AI continuously what we want it to do. Um, so then, um, yeah, there, there are many ways to do value learning. And the simplest one is reinforcement learning. Uh, and this is represented by, for example, IXC and Q learning and many other popular algorithms. It's a very simple model and it doesn't require any understanding on the agent's part. It's basically just a function maximizer optimizing a reward function. Uh, but this has some problems when you try to apply it naively in the, in the real world. One is that it's hard to program a reward function. And this is just one reason, it's just for the same reason I just mentioned, it's hard to actually express your wishes uh, and even harder to express them in a, a computer program that gives a reward. Another option would be to manually give the agent reward at every time step. But this is very laborious. You have to constantly watch the agent, constantly evaluate is it doing good or not, or not, and tell it how much reward do you have at this time point. 
So how do we give it, give it reward? That's the problem with reinforcement learning. Another problem is catastrophic exploration. If a reinforcement learning agent um, finds this cliff that it can jump off from, basically the only way the agent has to learn whether there is reward at the bottom of the cliff or not is to try jumping off the cliff. And uh, that's not very good. <clears throat> there was a recent paper where they found that the, this reinforcement learning Atari playing agents um, had to do catastrophic exploration like die or something similar. Uh, several thousand times before they actually learned to manage the environment good. Uh, and this is not desirable, obviously. Finally, reinforcement learning has the wireheading problem, where the agent is supposed to maximize the reward and finds that the easiest way to do that is to just grab the reward signal and feed itself a lot of reward. So these are some practical problems with reinforcement learning. Um, so how can we fix those? There's been some interesting extensions of reinforcement learning that I will discuss next. So one is reinforcement learning from human preferences. Um, here basically the agent tells the human two possible future scenarios and lets the human choose which one is better or not. For example, uh, I'm about to jump off this cliff. Here is the video where I jump off the cliff. Here is the video where I don't. Which, which scenario do you think is better? And based on all these stated preferences, the agent can learn a reward function and then optimize this learned reward function. Uh, so in this uh, recent paper by OpenAI and Google DeepMind, uh, they taught uh, the agent in the Mojo Coup environment to do this really complicated backflip. And it's really hard to specify a, a reward function for that explicitly, but it's pretty easy to just say like, yeah, now you're doing a backflip, now you're, doing no now you're not. And, uh, with just like an hour of supervision, the agent can learn to do this uh, complex behavior. Uh, when we go to human preferences, uh, rather than just pure reinforcement learning, we actually need some understanding on the agent's part. The agent needs to understand how it can communicate scenarios to the human. Um, for example, in this Mojuku environment, it's easy to just generate video clips, but this is not perhaps so easy in the real world. It also needs to understand what are the salient features of different scenarios. Is the salient feature that I jump off the cliff or not? Or is the salient feature that this affects some cloud and a thousand meters above me and this affects the weather? Uh, so there is some understanding required for this. Um, but I'll discuss shortly why I think this is better. Another interesting reinforcement learning extension is uh, inverse reinforcement learning. Uh, and here instead, the agent learns a reward function by observing the human's actions. And this is actually not so different when you think about it, because an action is really a preference statement. If I choose to do this action rather than that action, this means that I prefer whatever happens here to whatever happens here. And this idea of inverse reinforcement learning was um, <coughs> uh, demonstrated to work rather well for helicopter flight uh, almost 10 years ago in a very famous paper. Uh, where the agent observed a human pilot flying in a helicopter, and by observing the human pilot's actions, how it pulls his levers and stuff like that, the agent figured out what the pilot was trying to do. And then the agent could actually do fly the helicopter better than the human pilot himself. So that's rather impressive. Uh, of course, if we want to do inverse reinforcement learning, we also need some understanding on the agent's part. The agent needs to be able to detect the human's actions, uh, and human actions can in general be quite diverse, such as a soccer kick or a Bitcoin purchase or giving a talk. And all these like, diverse kinds of actions all tell the agents something about, about the human's desire. So the second thing the agent needs to understand is how it infers desire uh, from this action and how that in turn teaches it something about the human's reward function that it's supposed to optimize. So both these RL extensions require more understanding on the agent's part than pure reinforcement learning. But we get a fair bit in return. So the first problem I mentioned is that it's really laborious to teach a reinforcement learning uh, agent if you need to do it manually. But in inverse reinforcement learning, you actually don't need to do any manual oversight at all, in theory at least. You can just go about and act in the world as you would normally do, and the agent will watch your actions 
and guess what you're trying to do and help you do it. Uh, when the agent learns from your preferences, then of course you need to pay attention to this scenario the agent is telling you, asking you about and like evaluate them and say, say which one you prefer. Um, but this can be much, much more data efficient than telling the agent the reward signal at each time step, which typically will just be like zero for long stretches of time, for example. Uh, another benefit is catastrophic exploration. Um, the RL agent basically only has the option, uh, let's try to find out if there's a reward at the bottom of the cliff. But it's not hard to imagine, although no one has actually done this, that uh, an agent learning from human preferences could say something like, hey human, should I try jumping off the cliff? And the human can just say, no, don't do that. There is no reward there. Uh, inverse reinforcement learning, you could also imagine some similar mechanism uh, where the agent figured out what the human will do and not jump off the cliff. I should mention that there is a bunch of work on safe exploration in reinforcement learning, so this is not entirely true. You could possibly fix this within the RL framework itself, but it seems like we get it more for free if we consider these other RL extensions. Uh, finally, the wire heading problem. In reinforcement learning, this is when the agent just hijacks its reward signal and feeds itself reward. In RL, basically the agent has no way to tell that this wire-headed state is a bad state because it's getting a lot of rewards, so all it uh, can see is that it's doing really well. But in a human preference or uh, inverse RL framework, uh, the agent could simply ask, hey human, uh, is this wire-headed state that I just found is that a good state or a bad state? Uh, and find out that, yeah, this wirehead state is not a good state, even though I'm getting a lot of reward here. And this is a uh, dynamic I explore a lot in my HK paper that I will present next week. So yeah, um, from a value learning perspective, um, these um, RL extensions, learning from human preferences and um, and inverse reinforcement learning have like good properties. What about corrigibility? Here we want that the agent should allow uh, for software corrections and shutdown if we want to correct it, if it's about to do something stupid. Uh, and until recently, this was considered a rather separate problem from the value learning problem. <coughs> uh, but last year, there was some work from Stuart Russell's group, uh, which basically show that uh, uh, inverse reinforcement learning can, can solve the shutdown problem uh, quite well. Uh, and this was also what our paper yesterday was about. So basically the argument is that the human pressing a shutdown button is a pretty strong <coughs> preference statement or a pretty easily interpretable action that the AI should shut down now. Um, there is like a really interesting dynamic to explore about this, so that's what our paper is about. Um, but on a high level, uh, this seems rather straightforward. It probably requires some sort of self-understanding on the agent's part, uh, because it needs to understand that, okay, human presses this button, then this is this me thing is the thing that's supposed to shut down. Um, and self-understanding is also crucial for self-preservation. In my AGI paper from last year, I showed that there is a, um, a class of agents that naturally want to self-preserve. Uh, but the need uh, an understanding of how their self is affected by events in the world. The need to have an understanding in that if this hacker out there changes my uh, goal function, then my future self is going to act in a very different way than if I don't let the hacker change my goal. So they really need an understanding of self. Uh, and if you consider some different examples of agents, do they have self-understanding? For example, IX and Q learning are off-policy reinforcement learning agents. They essentially assume that future versions of themselves um, act optimally, no matter what. And this is obviously not a very realistic model of themselves, <coughs> because if someone hacks them or breaks them, they're, then they're not going to act optimally in the future. 
Sour sign policy gradient algorithms are also very popular, uh, so-called own policy reinforcement learning agents. Uh, they essentially assume that their future self will act in the same way as their past self acted, which is more realistic. Um, but it's not clear that they would understand uh, that if some hacker hacked them, then uh, they would act very differently than their past selves. So I don't think they fully um, satisfy this required self-understanding to be self-preserving. Uh, at this conference, there was a paper about self-awareness in NARS. Um, so I could imagine that uh, some of the cognitive, cognitive architectures uh, go a little bit beyond that and have a better... Yeah, just one more slide. Um, and have a better understanding of themselves. So yeah, that's basically my talk. To summarize, um, understanding can be used to make AIs more safe, but we should not use understanding in a naive way by um, specifying goals explicitly in terms of some high-level concepts, because this leads to the evil genie effect. But we can ask, uh, use understanding in a different way to teach the agent to ask and interpret human preferences, or to identify and interpret human actions. Uh, if additionally we have uh, a sufficient self-understanding, then we get a bunch of nice properties such that we don't really need to spend a lot of time um, supervising the agent. The agent will presumably do safer exploration with less than new wire heading. It will be naturally corrigible and self-preserving, at least ideally. Like there's a bunch of details to work out on all these points, but at least in theory, uh, this is a way to use understanding to make more safe AI. Thank you.